In Retrieval Augmented Generation, the process is structured straightforward. Initially, a query is transformed into a vector through an embedding model. Then a similarity metric, such as cosine similarity, is used to compare this query vector with all the vectors in a vector database. The most closely corresponding vectors allow us to retrieve the most relevant documents from that vector store. The documents are then sent to a large language model along with a prompt. However, in practice, the quality of the results from this process is not always satisfactory. There are various approaches to improve the quality at different stages in the process. In this video, these methods and their combinations at different times are discussed. One such method is query expansion, where the original query is transformed by a LLM into a total of five very similar queries. This allows for more granular queries to the database to potentially obtain more relevant documents that would not have been found with the original query. However, after retrieving the documents, it is important to remember that compressing text into vectors always results in information loss. Therefore, it is advisable to present the retrieved documents to a specialized model, and this is where a cross-encoder comes into play. Unlike a bi-encoder, what the embedding models are, which merely generates independent vectors from individual text pieces, a cross-encoder can more accurately assess the relationship and contextuality between the original query and the retrieved documents. A cross-encoder analyzes the query document pair as a whole and can thus detect subtler meaning differences and more relevant connections that might be overlooked by a bi-encoder analysis. Therefore, using a cross-encoder at this stage is of great value to improve the quality of final answers and ensure that the selected documents actually meet the needs and intentions of the original query. But this is not the final sequence. After the cross-encoding, an additional step of data processing is introduced to overcome the weaknesses of LLMs in processing context in the middle, as discussed in the paper Lost in the Middle. Instead of sorting the documents in a simple descending order of their presumed importance, they are strategically reordered. The most important documents are not only placed at the top of the list, but also at the end to leverage the tendency of the models to process information at the beginning and the end of the context more efficiently. This re-ranking procedure takes into account the U-shaped performance curve of the models and ensures that the most relevant information is positioned both at the beginning and at the end of the document list to maximize the efficiency and accuracy of information processing by an LLM. Okay, enough of theory, now let's do this with Langchain and real data. Okay, I'm now in VS Code and before we start with the code, we first gonna look at our data sets. We've got two data sets, data1.txt and data2.txt. Data1.txt contains information about a fictional bank called Elmwood Banking, where the user can get some information about what um, the bank offers. And the same applies for data2.txt, but this is about a fictional restaurant where the user gets information about the food the restaurant offers and so on. So two different topics and we want to create embeddings and uh, put that embeddings into a vector store. So first we have to install some packages to do this. I stored all of the dependencies in the requirements.txt. We have to install Langchain OpenAI, Langchain ChromoDB as our vector store, TikToken as our tokenizer, UmapLearn which allows us to reduce the dimensions from 1536 to two dimensions so we can visualize our embeddings. And then we've got sentence transformers which contains our cross encoder model and matplotlib to make our visualizations. So to do this, install it with pip install minus r and then requirements.txt. This may take some seconds and after that just import the classes we require. We have to import OpenAI embeddings, a recursive character text splitter to split the documents. So these two documents into multiple smaller chunks. We've got our loaders. So we load all of the data from our current working directory and only the files which have got the ending.txt. So first let's do this. Ah, very important. You have to also create a .n file where you store your OpenAI API key. So as always in my tutorials, we use OpenAI. So let's run the first line. So we import the classes and load our environment variables. And then we load the files uh, from our working directory. So, but first we have to rename the requirements.txt because we don't want to um, embed the requirements file. So let's have a look at the length. 
So we've got two documents, this is fine, this is data1.txt and data2.txt. And now let's use a recursive character text splitter to split these documents into smaller chunks. So we first create a new variable called new docs, which only contains documents. And then we extract the page content attribute from that documents and store it as another list. So we now have the documents list and the a list with only strings. Let's run this. And now we want to create our embeddings. So as class, we will use OpenAI embeddings. And what's cool is that OpenAI just released a new embedding model. And this is one which we will directly use. So we use the text embedding three small. In my opinion, this is a much better model than ADA002. So let's directly use it. Okay, now we want to create vectors from the uh, doc strings. So these vectors will be stored in the vectors variable. So we need these vectors to visualize these later with UMAP. So only two dimensions will be created from these vectors. Okay, so now let's create our vector store, which we do with chroma. So we create our DP variable and make it a retriever with the S retriever method. And we only want to retrieve uh, the top six documents from that retriever. So let's run that. So great, our setup is now done. And we can now use the UMAP class to create a transformer from that uh, vectors. So we instantiate the UMAP class, pass in the random state, so we don't have any variants here. And we use the fit method and pass the vectors here. So this is our transformer. And now we want to transform these vectors in only two dimensions to make a visualization of our embeddings. So this may take some time. So now we fitted this transformer. And we can now use the UMAP transformer to create our two dimensional embeddings. So we do this with a little helper function, UMAP embed, where we pass in the vectors and we, where we pass in our transformer, which is the instance of that UMAP transformer we just created. So let's run that to create the function. And now we use that function to calculate our global embeddings. So only our two dimensional global embeddings, of course. So again, this may take some time. We've got 63 chunks from our two uh, files. So what we've got is an array and the array contains multiple vectors. So we only got two dimensions now, which were originally 1536 dimensions. So of course we lose a lot of information, but it's much better to visualize that information in a plot. So let's use that new vectors and visualize it with matplotlib. And as you can see, we've got two different areas here. So this is the bank and this is our fictional restaurant. So that's very much separated from each other. So two different topics and two different circles here. I think this is pretty good. Okay, in the next step, we want to make retrieval on our vector database and see how similar the retrieved documents are to our global embeddings. So we do this with another helper function. So we embed a single query and we retrieve the most relevant documents from our vector store. And then we extract the page content of that retrieved documents and embed that again. And then we visualize it against our global embeddings. So let's create that helper function and now run it with the query, what loan do you offer? So let's run this. This may also take a few seconds. And then we see a very nice plot of our visualization. Ah, okay, that is actually the bank and this is the restaurant. As you can see, that this is our query with the red X and the green dots are our retrieved documents. So this is not bad, but actually it would be better if these green dots would not be included in our result, but instead this dot and this dot would be included in our result. So to make this somehow work, we can do query expansion. But actually before we do this, we make another try here with the vegetarian food, just to see an example for the restaurant. So yeah, all of the dots are at least here on the left. And as you can see also that um, we've got more similar dots to our query, but the retrieve documents were this and this. So better would be if we get all of the closed dots related to our query. So let's do this with query expansion. So we use the chat open AI class from Langchain and we actually have to import it from Langchain AI. The other one is deprecated. Okay, this works now. And now we, what we're gonna do is we take the initial query and pass it to an LLM. Our prompt is that you are an AI that 
has to generate five different versions of the given user question to retrieve relevant documents from a vector database. So the LLM will be instructed to do this and we pass it to an output parser where we got all of our results in a new line. So let's run this. And now we get our queries. And yeah, this is the list of strings. Do you have any vegetarian options available? Are there any vegetarian dishes on your menu? Do you cater to vegetarians? Yeah, very similar queries. And this should help us to now get better results. So we make a list comprehension here and I want to retrieve our documents from our vector database based on every query. This documents list now probably contains a lot of duplicated values and we want to drop the duplication. We can easily do this with a set in Python. So we iterate over each of the documents and have a look if the page content is already in this uh, set or not. And if it's not in a set, we append it to the set. And at the end, we convert our set to a list again. So let's run this. And now we have our unique documents. And yeah, actually, I think it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So instead of five or six documents, we've got nine documents, which should be closer to the original query. We now got nine documents, but we only want to send five documents to the LLM. We retrieved the documents with a similarity score, which is good, but not nearly as good as checking the similarity of the query and the documents with a specialized model. Drawback is that the specialized model is very slow and computationally expensive, so we only use it as the second step of our retrieval process. We use a BERT cross encoder to rank our query against the documents we retrieved. So let's import a specialized cross encoder class. So from the library sentence transformers, we import the cross encoder and pass in a model we want to use. We will use the MS Marco Mini LM L6V2 as cross encoder. We now create pairs, so query and document. Here's the query and here is the doc. Since the scores are calculated pairwise and each pair is passed to uh, um, the transformer model individually. So now we use the predict method and pass in this as list and this will be calculated then for each of our pairs and we will get scores. So we get back this array from our model and now we use zip to create a tuple of score and doc so we can see which document belongs to which score. And now we can also re-rank this list. So now we've got a sorted docs tuple and this is the highest score. So La Bella Vista also provides itself on its vegetarian and vegan options. So this is the query which scores highest in our model. And this is now ranked differently than before. And what we're gonna do now is we only want to get the five most similar documents. So we use this list and extract only the, the content and we drop the original scores. So these are now the five documents we want to send to an LLM. We've got one last issue with how we ranked our documents. So from top to bottom, and this has something to do with how context is used in an LLM. So this is very nice described in the paper Lost in the Middle, how language models use long contexts and here in this graph, you can clearly see that the accuracy drops from the top position to the middle position and rises again on the last positions of the documents. So we want to have our most important documents at the beginning and at the end of an LLM call. So Langchain provides a very nice re-rank for that. And that this is the long context reorder class. So we just import that, create an instance, and then we pass in our list of documents. And that's actually it. So now we've got our most important documents here on the top and on the bottom. And we can now send these documents to the LLM. Great. So this is how you do two-stage retrieval with an embedding model and a cross encoder and even use another re-ranker to cover the lost in the middle issue. Thanks for watching.